At first glance, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts looks like a bright and colorful game that a kid would play after they get done with the latest LEGO release. After all, this game has the characters and aesthetic design of the old Nintendo 64 Banjo-Kazooie games. However, once you dig a little deeper, you'd find a hardcore, ambitious experience with a surprising learning curve. In other words, it may not quite be what you're expecting. It's a little hard to classify what kind of game Nuts and Bolts is. If you think it's a direct sequel to the previous Banjo-Kazooie platformers, you're in for a shock. The focus here is quite squarely on vehicles. Yes, vehicles. You build them, tweak them, and tailor them for the challenge missions that pop up in each world you visit. You can jump out of these vehicles and do some actual conventional platforming, but it's not in the way you might think. For starters, I never actually died in this game. If you're able to, it won't be at the hands of mistimed jumps or aggressive bad guys. Instead, the platforming focus is on exploration and collecting a number of items in the hub world called Showdown Town. However, you will fall short of mission objectives if the vehicle you build is not up to snuff. And you will fail some of these often late in the game if you don't design some top-notch rides. It can get pretty challenging. I actually like this dynamic, even though a lot of platforming purists will probably cry foul. The idea that the game just exists so that you can make creative things that accomplish goals in creative ways is an intriguing one. For example, getting a good distance on the long jump challenge can be achieved by using springs, or making a glider, or simply detonating your vehicle at the right moment to send Banjo flying. You'll spend a lot of time thinking about the best way to do something, and it's rewarding to see careful design and planning result in success. This is especially true because you can even edit your vehicle during your mission, adding a whole new twist to the gameplay. Given the vast number of parts and possible combinations, you can really go to town making something truly unique. That is nuts and bolts at its best. The problem is that some flaws keep it from being the classic that it could have been. For one, the game is very ambitious, perhaps a little too ambitious. The worlds are creative and massive, but everything is physics-based. As a result, the game sometimes chugs along as the display can't keep up with the action. These wacky physics also affect the vehicles themselves. Once you put in the time to learn the powerful vehicle builder, it's quite easy to put something together. However, because of the physics, you'll also have to take into account how wheels are spaced, the weight distribution, the vehicle's power, if it will survive a crash, amongst many other things. There will be a lot of times when you pour a lot of creative effort into making a vehicle just to have it tip over during its maiden voyage. There are a lot of variables to think about, and that equates to a steeper than expected learning curve, even with all the tutorials and stepping stones the game provides. Also, as creative as some of the challenges are, there could be much more variety. Fetching objects and competing in races can get a little old when they're in such great abundance. Also, the multiplayer game could have been set up much better. Not only are the menu and party system poorly laid out and filled with annoying sound effects, but you'll basically have to play through the entire single player game to get parts and blueprints that will make the multiplayer game fun. You can play it with stock vehicles, but that rather defeats the entire purpose of the game. It's a multiplayer game that perhaps sounds better on paper than it works in reality. The game does have the same classic banjo charm and humor. The music is good and there are a ton of cool side things to do in Showdown Town that will keep completionists busy for hours. The game's progression will be familiar to banjo fans, with dozens of jiggies to collect and win, musical notes to collect, and new doors and areas opening up as you work your way through the game. Without rushing, I finished the game in around 20 hours, but it will take over 30 to find every jingo, jiggy, music note, or what have you. Nuts and Bolts isn't for everyone. It reminds me very much of the first Viva Pinata game. It's a complex experience in kids' clothing that is somewhat held back by its ambition. Overall, it's a fun game that will give back what you put into it. For the full written review, head over to IGN.com.